Hello everybody and welcome back to Synapse. I'm Rithika and in this video we are going to talk about hydrated cyst. Hydrated cyst is a fluid-filled bladder-like cyst seen in internal organs, commonly seen in liver and some other organs such as lungs. It is caused by echinococcus granulosis which is dog tapeworm. Here is a simple diagram showing the structure of an adult dog tapeworm which consists of a head also called as a scolex, the neck and the body consisting of three segments also called as the proglottids. And this is a simple diagram showing the structure of the egg which consists of the embryo in the center which is surrounded by a thick embryo pore which is further surrounded by a thin egg shell. The larval form of Echinococcus is the hydrated cyst itself, the structure of which we will discuss in some time. Let's briefly look at the Echinococcus life cycle. The definitive host for Echinococcus is dog. So in dog, the sexual part of the cycle occurs. And the intermediate host, that is the organism in which the asexual part of the cycle occurs, is normally sheep. But man is an accidental host, that is he becomes a dead-end host. So the man occurs, um, acquires the infection by consumption of contaminated food, so food contaminated with the eggs of echinococcus, and the hexacanth embryo hatches out and penetrates the intestine and reaches the internal organs, such as liver, where it develops into the larval form, which is the hydrated cyst. Now, because dogs do not feed on human viscera, human becomes a dead-end host. While dogs, they acquire the infection by consumption of viscera of infected animals such as sheep. The ingested scolex evaginates in the intestine, develops into adult worm in the small intestine and fertilizes to release eggs in the feces. And the cycle goes on. Now, let's look at the structure of the hydrated cyst. It consists of an outer layer called the pericyst, which is host-derived layer. It consists of fibrous tissue and blood vessels produced by the host cellular reaction. And then you have the ectocyst. This is parasite derived layer. It is tough, elastic and acellular layer. Then comes the endocyst which is also parasite derived. And this acts as the germinal layer. It produces the ectocyst on the outside and on the inside it produces or secretes the hydrated fluid and forms the brood capsules. And inside these brood capsules and the daughter cysts are the developing scolices. The scolices can also be found free in the hydrated fluid called as the hydrated sand. The developing scolices are referred to as protoscolices. Now let's look at the classification of the hydrated cyst. So there is WHO and Gerby classification. I'll be giving stress to the WHO classification while the corresponding Gerby classification is also given. So uh, the type CE1 is simple unilocular and anechoic cyst, while when it is multiseptated and honeycomb cyst, it is referred to as CE2 type. If the membranes are detached, uh, such as in the water lily sign, which is called the water lily sign, it is referred to as CE3A stage or type. When a cyst contains daughter cysts in solid matrix, it is referred to as the CE3B type. When the cyst has heterogeneous hypoechoic or hyperechoic contents with no daughter cysts in it, it is referred to as CE4 type. And CE5 type is when it has calcified walls. CE1 and 2 are active lesions while the type CE4 and CE5 are inactive lesions while CE3A and 3B are transitional lesions. Before I go ahead, I would want to mention about our Instagram page at LearnSynapse. Please do follow this page where you will find uh, tables such as these and other informative bits on our page and also regular fun questions which you could solve. I would also put up this table and certain CT or the ultrasound images of a few of these stages so you could remember these concepts for a little longer. I find this image so useful and amazing. I'm going to put the link for this image in the description box. You can also find this on our Instagram page. 
So now this has the ultrasound, the MRI and the CT scan of each of the types of the hydrated cyst. So in CE1 type, there is this unilocular cyst, hypoechoic cyst, right? In CE2, it is multiloculated, there is honeycomb appearance. In CE3A, there is floating membranes. So this is called the water lily sign, right? And in CE3B, there are daughter cysts within solid matrix. In CE4, there is heterogeneous nature of the cyst. You can see the heterogeneous nature here. And in CE5, there is calcification of the wall. And about the clinical features, uh, most of the patients are asymptomatic, while if they have symptoms, it is because of the mass or the pressure effect, such as a palpable mass and hepatomegaly. Abdominal tenderness can be seen. Obstructive symptoms can be seen when the daughter cysts go erode and block certain passages. Meet may lead to cholestasis, cholangitis, and if the hydrated cyst is in lungs, it can lead to dyspnea. And the hydrated fluid is highly antigenic and it can lead to anaphylactic reactions if the hydrated cyst bursts or leaks. About the laboratory investigations, ultrasonography is the best test. Uh, well, X-ray, CT scan, MRI is also very helpful imaging, are also very helpful imaging techniques. Hydrated fluid microscopy and histological examination can be done, but this is not done before the removal of the cyst as it may lead to anaphylactic reactions. So these are done after the removal of the cyst. Antibody detection can be done by tests such as ELISA and Western blot. Skin tests called the Cassoni test can be done for hydrated cyst or echinococcus, which is an immediate hypersensitivity test or eosinophilia can be looked for in the blood. Uh, about the treatment for the hydrated cyst, a very popular technique is the PEAR technique, where P stands for puncture, A for aspirate, I for injection and R for re-aspirate. So in puncture, so uh, you puncture the hydrated cyst with ultrasound guidance and then you aspirate about 10 to 15 ml of the cyst fluid and then you inject scolicidal substances into the cyst such as hypertonic saline or cetrimide and then you re-aspirate the fluid. By doing this you try and avoid and reduce the chances of leakage of the hydrated fluid and thus reduce the chances of anaphylactic reaction. In adjunction to this pair technique Albendazole is given from 10 days before the procedure to about 3 months after the procedure. And if there are any uh, leakages of the scolysis into the abdominal cavity, then you might want to extend the albendazole therapy for up to 6 months after this technique. The spare technique can be used when the cyst is single and it is accessible. And this technique should not be used when the hydrated cyst is communicating with the biliary tree. And there are other contraindications such as multiple cysts and cysts in inaccessible areas. So when this technique cannot be performed or the patient does not respond well to the medical therapy or percutaneous treatment such as pear, then surgical interventions will be necessary. So it could be as simple as deroofing of the cyst where you uh, remove the content of the cyst and strip off the layers of the hydrated cyst or it could be lobectomy or even complete liver resection depending upon the size and extent of the cyst. I hope you found this video very helpful and if you did like the video and share the video and subscribe to our channel for more such videos. And follow us on Instagram at LearnSynapse and on Facebook at Synapse. Thank you and bye-bye.